This is a hoverfly, um, probably the one you're most familiar with. Um, commonly known as the marmalade hoverfly, though not very many of them do have common names. And this is probably the one you'll see most commonly in your gardens or in a park or wherever, just about anywhere these days. This one is also a hoverfly, but looks nothing like the first one. This one's mimicking a bumblebee. Mm, looks more like a bee. Yeah. And this is also a hoverfly, but this is less than a centimetre long and extremely thin. Um, so what do they all have in common? They are flies. They are not bees. This is a bee. Right. The various differences between flies and bees. One is that flies have only one pair of wings um, and bees have two pairs of wings, so they're not always very obvious. The one thing they do, where they do differ, is the eyes, which are much smaller in bees, and the antennae. If you look at closely at the antennae on this, um, you'll see it's made up of lots of little different sections. And next, this is a wasp. And because wasps and bees are very closely related, this also has antennae in lots of little sections. Whereas in another hoverfly, even though this one looks like a wasp, it's got two very large eyes, unlike the smaller eyes on a bee or wasp and if you look closely at the antennae they only have three sections one two three can you see the cursor okay yeah yes yeah. yes yeah and these look like feathers and these narrow things branching off which are called arista all part of the sensory system okay this however is a fly, it's got the short antennae and the big eyes, but this one is not a hopper fly. This is a soldier fly. Um, and going into the differences, it gets very complicated, but the one identifying feature of a hopper fly, apart from the antennae, is the wing. And the wing has a very similar pattern and all hoverflies, the veins don't go to the rear end of the wing. And right in the middle, it's not very clear, but there is a faint line down between those veins. And that is a fold in the wing, which means that it can hover in a way that bees and wasps can't hover. It can they can fly backwards when they're hovering, pretty much anything a helicopter can do and a lot more. Right. right. This is another very common hoverfly, um, a surface. There are three species of surface in this country, um, and they're very difficult to tell apart unless you put them under a microscope. Apart from these ones, which is a female surface rivesi, and it's you can tell um which one it is because it has an all yellow rear femur so how do you know it's female this is a male of the same species and you'll notice its eyes are joined together at the top of its head whereas this is a female and you can see there's a space between the eyes that works with about 90% of the hoverflies, but there are some where it doesn't. This is um, Helophilus pendulus, which is commonly known as the football hoverfly, because its thorax with the stripes on is supposed to resemble a football jersey, though I don't know which club it is, perhaps uh, <laughs> Hull City, I'm not sure. In this, <laughs> the male 
has the eyes separated. Um, but they are very parallel um, on the top of the head, whereas in the female they aren't. But this is the other way you find out which is which. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see, if you look carefully, you can see the difference in the eyes um, with the, the male, obviously, on top. Um, anyway, there we go. This is, is he smaller one which is... than her? Sorry? Sorry. Is he smaller than her? Um, yes, the males do t usually tend to be slightly smaller than the female. Um, this one is a, one of the other few ones with a common name. This is technically Myothropa florea, but it's known as the Batman hoverfly. If you look at the thorax, you can see the sort of Batman logo. I don't know if that's where they nicked it from, but <laughs> it's very convincing. And this is a wasp mimic. Um, which one is this? Chrysotoxum festivum, um, which is one of my favorite looking ones. Um, you can quite often see these buzzing around low in the undergrowth. Mainly, you'll see hoverflies actually sitting on the flowers. And in America, they're actually not known as hoverflies. They're known as flower flies for that reason. Though there are plenty which don't. So um, hoverflies is probably a, a much better term for them. I say This is one of the ones with the longer antennae. And this is a closely related one, but a much fatter and bulbous one. Um, this is Chrysotoxum arcuatum, which is only found in the north of England. Um, you get a lot more hoverflies down south, but this is the one that um, folk down south get very jealous of us having. <laughs> and this one is Didia fasciata, um, one which is not very common, but this is the time of year when you see them. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to get through this quite rapidly, I think. Um, are these are these your photographs? Oh yes, yeah, these are all all my. Photographs. They're fantastic. They're absolutely brilliant. Absolutely beautiful, and the wings. Oh, yeah, they're lovely. Yeah, this is one where you. This is one where you can actually probably see that vein down the middle there, yeah. Um, yeah. which is identifies it as a hoverfly. Um, I, I wasn't entirely sure how that works. When you explained about the vein down the middle, and it's a fold in the up. wing which allows the wing to operate in a in a in a way that other flies and bees can't. That's a right. Um, it's what actually allows it to hover. The technicalities of it, I don't understand, <laughs> oh, right. but okay. it, it just allows the wing to move in a way which um, bees can't. That's right, that rather than <laughs> that. Uh, Very good demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wave their hands about in a funny way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Mm. This is um um I'm trying to remove this is this is Epistrophe elegans, which is a uh, one which you would only find quite early in spring. Um and like most of the ones uh, so we've seen recently, they lay their eggs amongst aphids on flowers or veg in your garden or on your allotment and the uh, the larvae when they hatch out of the eggs will live on aphids so they they're a real gardener's friend pretty much like ladybirds mm. um, brilliant <laughs> so they are to be encouraged <laughs> and the other thing which I, I haven't mentioned so far is uh, it's a good idea to identify hoverflies. They're completely harmless. Uh, they don't sting or bite. So you don't need to worry about uh, 
being attacked by a wasp if you know it's a hoverfly. This is another bee mimic. Um, there's a whole family or tribe, should I say, of these species called Eristalis. Um, and unlike the previous one, which laid its eggs in on your leaves, uh, which where the aphids are, these lay their eggs in muddy puddles and compost heaps and anywhere which is full of ramp, damp and rotting vegetation. And their larvae are like little aquatic maggots, <laughs> looking absolutely nothing like the adult. Um, most of the ones we've seen so far have been yellow and black and maybe with a bit of white on, but this is the only one which has blue on it. <laughs> this is Leucozona glaucia, which um, is around at the moment. Um, some of some hoverflies don't live very long at all, so you'll tend to see some in early spring, others in mid-summer. Um, some have several generations and throughout the year, but many will just have one brood per year. And this is its close relation, Leucozona latinaria, very similar to the other one, except this is in monochrome. So if they have several generations throughout the year, what happens in the winter? Do, it, do they hibernate or do the larvae pupate? Or... Right. There's a whole mixture of different strategies. Some of the bigger right. bee-like one, bee ones can hibernate, but it's usually only the females that can survive the winter, tucked away right. in an ivy bush or, or something like that, mm -hmm. like, like one or two butterflies do. Others will hibernate as larva um, in sort of leaf litter on the ground, you know, under trees where there's piles of dead leaves. Right. If you turn over a few leaves, you can occasionally find a hoverfly larva. Other ones will actually pupate um, mm -hmm. uh, before the start of the winter. There are some species which actually tunnel in their larva, tunnel into plant roots and stems, oh, and wow. they will turn into pupae and overwinter as pupa. So this is a good reason not not to prune your garden right back in the autumn, to leave um, plants so that... No, but they usually go well down into the root system uh, right. of most plants. So it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not a great idea to tidy absolutely everything up. Uh, yeah. so. Oh, good. <laughs> good, there's an excuse not to do some work, yeah. Um, now, this one, um, talking of it, looks a bit like some we've seen already, but this is a different family. This is Meridon Equestris. Um, and this is the only one, probably, the only common one, which will actually do some damage because they lay their eggs on daffodils and the larva will wander down the plant and get into the root of the daffodil bulb or, or closely related narcissus species and they will overwinter in as pupa in your daffodils so these tend to come out in spring just after the, the daffodils have grown um uh, they don't do an awful lot of damage but you know if you're a breeder of daffodils and uh are very fussy about them uh, put them in the greenhouse away from these creatures. Then there's another whole tribe of hoverflies, which are very small and usually very black looking, um, called Platycyrus. Now they are identifiable because the males have very odd looking feet. And uh, this is the one with the... Uh, most obviously uh, uh, decorated feet um, and is called Platycaeus granditatus or Bigfoot, which is quite appropriate. As you see. Um, another odd one which buries in its um, larva into plant 
bulbs, but this one do, does it in wild garlic and only wild garlic. So this is the only place you'll ever see them is sort of, you know, early spring when the wild garlic is flowering and the sun comes out, you'll see them all over the, the plants. This one um, lays its eggs in cowpats. <laughs> This is Ringia campestris, and it has this most amazing sort of nose, and from which it extends an extremely long tongue. Um, it's known colloquially as the Heineken hopperfly because its tongue can reach the parts that others can't. This one is Skyva parastri, which is actually quite big, and again, uh, unusual as it's in black and white. Um, this, some people call this a migrant hoverfly because in some years, if the wind's in the right direction, they'll come over from the continent in huge numbers, as well as the, the local ones. Um, but a very nice critter. That's a stunning photo. Look it's, at the gloss on the flower. Yeah, the flower makes that. Sandy might be able to tell you which flower it is. It's in the <laughs> it's in the window box at uh, the back of our kitchen. <laughs> Gorgeous. It's called Ecky something. Maybe it's called Ecky Thump. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Uh, back to another big one. This one is called Sericomia silentis, and this tends to be found um, in sort of moorland and boggy areas, though they occasionally come down to the garden. One we can find lots of around here, um, but not so many in Wigan. So I don't know, it's probably quite boggy in Wigan, isn't it? In, <laughs> maybe. In parts, yes. In parts, yes. Um, and this is an even bigger one. This Some people say this is supposed to mimic a hornet. Um, it's there, you get, get the size. It's sitting on there on the end of my index finger. Um, so Quite, quite a big one. This is Volucella inanis. Um, this is one of a few hoverflies which we never got in the Manchester area until very recently. And they've been moving up from the southwest where they first sort of entered the country and they're spreading north as a result of, probably as a result of global warning, warming. Um, the southeast of the country has been very dry uh, for quite a few years now, apart from this year. Uh, and they are losing hoverflies at a fantastic rate, and they, they all seem to be heading in the northwest direction. And I think this is the last one. This is a closely related uh, to the previous one, the Volucella. But again, this is a pretty much a monochrome version. Um, Right, well, I've got through them faster than I thought I would. I love the wings on that one, the different colours. Yeah. Yes, they are lovely. You know the one where you, your index finger and it was on the end of it, how did you take that photograph? That was oh. nice. <laughs> Hang on, that one. Um, yeah. Quite often they're quite happy to come and sit on your finger. Um, really? Yeah, um, particularly if it's your finger is warmer than yeah. the plant they're sitting on. But hot days they won't do it. But if you just put your thumb and index finger around the plant that they're the flower that they're sitting on, they will quite very gently. They'll quite often crawl onto your finger, and then because it's warm, they'll stay there for a while. Um, some do it easier than others. That's something you can do this afternoon: is go and look for hoverflies, and <laughs> secondly, see if you can get them to crawl onto your finger. I'm going to solve the, I'm going to solve the cases. And after. then, yes, make sure it's your <laughs> if you're right-handed, make sure it's your right hand because then you have to operate the camera with one hand in your. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the other one. But, um, Please submit your photos tomorrow. <laughs> that's right. Yes, and send all your photographs to me, and then Sandy can. I'll, I'll do the IDs, and Sandy can uh, bring them back. <laughs> the one that specialises in wild garlic. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, uh, I would have thought that's 
what does it feed on? Because garlic repels a lot of insects. Yeah. In fact, it's used in organic insect spray. Right. Um, well, it's the, the larva feed on the, the bulb of the, the wild garlic. Oh, but right. then the adults will feed on the nectar from the flowers. Oh, from the flowers, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's... Mm. It's fascinating, it's, isn't it's it? It's very odd how some insects are very particular about um, what their larva will feed on, and others are not. They're much more generalist. Um, you'll find this with all sorts of, not just insects, but you know, creatures. Like They're very omnivorous, but um, like some birds will only eat certain things um, um other birds will eat a lot and obviously when you know if there's a decline in biodiversity it's the generalists which will survive so you know if there's a shortage of insects which everybody says there is at the moment that's going to be seriously affect insect eating birds but crows which will eat absolutely anything are going to do really well um i i, I yes. need Hoverfly. Well, don't breed hoverfly. A rear hoverfly. Um, I if I find a larva on a plant, um, I'll usually take the plant with some of the aphids that it eats. If it's an aphid eater, um, pop them all in a little tub together and uh, wait for the hoverfly to emerge. Um, with some hoverflies, it's the only way of finding out what they are um, because the larva looks so similar. Until you've reared them, you don't actually know what it is. All my records of hoverfly, everyone I see virtually, gets written down and recorded um, through a Facebook page, which is run by the Hoverfly Recording Scheme. And from all the thousands and thousands of records which are submitted uh, every year, they actually build up maps of the distribution of hoverflies and, you know, all this data informs lots of quite a lot of scientific investigations um so it's not just fun it's actually i hope it is actually useful as well so uh, oh, thank you very much thank you was, yeah thank you really uh, interesting um, yeah Okay, anyway, back to Sandy. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Steve disappeared now, has he gone off? He's, he's sitting in the rocking chair recovering. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you again. It was oh, really thank you. interesting. Yeah, you'll have to do the one on hoverfly larva next, which is um, it's quite interesting.